Alright, so what does it take to fix a clock on a Triumph Explorer? So first thing I'm going to do is reset my trip odometer because I just bought petrol. So I'll go to settings, so you guys can see. Go to settings. Nope. Nope. Hold. Set up, scroll, ABS on, traction control, units. I have no idea what IND is, but it's automatic. That's my service window, so they set the service window to 3,000. Yeah, so, clock is not in here. <laughs> I know it's fairly simple, folks, but... Uh, last trip set. Time set. Oh, here we go. T set. The clock's ticking, so... to return and we're back wow I did it and it only took five minutes <laughs> off we get to Okeechobee boy so I mentioned earlier that I really should be at home but I thought if I was at home right now what would I be doing well I'd be watching TV so I'm gonna come outside and watch real TV So I'm thinking about doing an iron butt, and if you're not familiar with what iron butt is, um, it's an unofficial club, if you will, or it's a certificate, basically. You could do a thousand miles in 24 hours, um, and they have forms that you fill out, and you get it signed, and they mark your uh, mileage. You mail it all in, and uh, you become one of the 60,000 iron butt members uh, here in the States and actually it's getting to be international now. And they have all sorts of different iron butt levels you can do. There's a, I forget what they're called, you have to go online and take a look, but um, you can get, uh, there's, there's a thousand miles in 24 hours, there's 1,500 miles in 36 hours, I believe. Um, and then there's doing it all in-state and cross-state and all sorts of other things. And there's different levels of how many iron butts you've done. There's, there's people that have done, like, I don't know, many, right? And uh, um, people that have done it on, like, C90s, Honda C90s and stuff. I mean, some really incredibly small motorcycles, which in itself is a challenge. Um, so I'm thinking about trying to organize one down here, try to keep a small group. Uh, Scott would love to do it, but he is uh, he doesn't have cruise control on his bike yet, and he's got a service coming up, um, his 12,000 mile service, so he doesn't want to put an extra thousand miles on the bike all of a sudden to do uh, uh, his service earlier than he had planned. So he's kind of on the fence. Um, Alan, who we've ridden with on his Harley, he's in. Alan's always in. Alan's a great sport. Um, and I really want to get Steve to join us. Steve from the Cafe Racer podcast. Um, we met Steve Actually, uh, Steve met us. He left a note on Scott's motorcycle at work, and uh, we got connected to Steve here in South Florida. Um, they have a really pretty cool show. They do, normally on Sundays, they do the live feed on Sundays for their podcast. About an hour-long show. Um, Scott and I do our best to get mentioned every week, so we're succeeding so far. But Steve's really cool that he's uh, been involved with uh, doing long distance trips, uh, off road trips, and he's got a, a KTM 1200 Super. And uh, he was just up at Overland Expo up in North Carolina. So he does camping and the off road stuff. 
Steve. Steve's really fun to be with. He, he knows a lot of people and a lot of things. And uh, Scott and I both are hoping to hang around with him more often. He's very busy with work. Uh, but when we do get to spend time with him, we, we pick up quite a bit. So, uh, interesting guy. So we want to drag Steve along with us on this iron butt. Uh, it's just a matter of timing for him. Uh, I don't know if he can uh, take the time from looking into it or not. But Florida's a pretty big state. We can do an iron butt within state really easily. Um, head up 95 to Jacksonville. Route 10 across to um, Tallahassee, and then back east a little bit, down 75 to Tampa, uh, go south of Tampa, Alligator Alley back across, it's a little over a thousand miles, so it's like the, uh, it's a good route, really boring, uh, but if you're trying to get your first iron butt under your belt, you probably want to stick to highways, um, keep your average speed up so that uh, you can take the breaks that you need to take to survive the trip. So now that it's cooler, I think I might survive that trip. So I'm really interested in trying to do that. I'm not sure if I can squeeze it in in November, maybe December. That will make an interesting video, but it won't be 24 hours long. Trust me. It could be really boring stuff like this. So you just Alright, rolling into the thriving metropolis of Indian Town, the St. Lucie Canal, which connects the Lake Okeechobee to the ocean, I believe. Big boats going in and out of there. Welcome to Indian Town. I'm not sure if there are any Indians that actually live in Indian Town anymore. Maybe we should be referring it to as Native American Town. Vote no to incorporation. Oh, they want to incorporate. Didn't know they weren't incorporated. A couple of motorcycles? Like a victory or something? Man, I can smell bacon. It always smells good here. <laughs> they got some good food cooking in this place. We support Indian Town independence. Vote no, vote yes. No, yes. I'm confused. How do I vote? Crackers Cafe. So the term, here we go with more of my ramblings. The Florida term, Florida Cracker, is actually a cowboy term. Uh, back when they were herding cattle, probably more towards central Florida, where it's not quite so swampy. There's big old vultures over there. Um, they were known for their uh, whips. The cowboys would carry whips to help herd the cattle. And uh, became known as Florida Crackers. So now it's more of a derogatory term. Although if you meet a Florida Cracker, they're very proud of their Florida Crackerness. And they'll tell you. So I'll switch off my inner Cliff Clavin. Scott accuses me of being like Cliff Clavin, and that's probably a pretty accurate analogy because uh, I don't really know what I'm talking about. And half my facts are incorrect, so my inner Clavin. My inner Clavin keeps leaking out. The big taco food truck. I wonder if the truck itself is big. Or they have big tacos. How big is a big taco? Wildlife crossing next 25 miles. Scott's still waiting to see his uh, his Florida Panther, which uh, will probably never happen because they're extremely rare. And if you're out on a motorcycle and you see one, it's probably not a good thing get hit by a car. Very reclusive. It's an interesting smokestack. I don't know if you can see it over here. It's obscured by the clouds. It's unusual.
sure why you would raise donkeys. But there you are.